All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the backend epidemiological model that operates for the dinosaur game. Um, the game was built in Unity, so this um, backend system is available to be imported as a package for Unity, and all the scripts are written in C Sharp. So all these files are hosted in the dialect GitHub and are available for downloading and cloning um, at your own leisure. On the home screen, you'll see a markdown document that explains how each file or each um, script works and how they interact. Um, but I'm going to go through each one and explain kind of what you can do with them and, and what they're intended to do. So the first one that we're going to look at is the Calculate, calculate Infected script. Um, it's kind of the first thing that runs whenever you install the package and run the game. Um, and it's where you want to start when you're working on the model. So the first thing you'll see here um, is that we have the total population um, that you're attempting to model. You can plug this in and, and say, um, you know, say we want to do a shopping mall, which is a couple thousand people. Um, or we could do something more intimate like a classroom and we plug in like 30 people. Uh, and then we have a couple other figures here. We have total infected, which is what the script, this script determines. Um, we also have total healthy, which the script also determines. Uh, and the percent of total infected. So uh, whenever the, um, the simulation starts on a week, we see that total population number is 250. You can change this to whatever you want, uh, to whatever you're modeling. And then we have a percent of general population infected. So this, um, this variable, this int, uh, is basically whatever um, percent of people are infected in your game world. So if, say, 50% of the population is infected with COVID, you would change it to 50. Um, we went with 8, which is roughly realistic um, for what the U.S. is experiencing or was experiencing during, during the game's development. Um, but you can change this to whatever you need. <clears throat> it then rolls based on how many um, individuals you have that you're simulating. So whatever you said was the total population that you're simulating, it'll roll for each one to say, okay, we have a part, we have an infection risk of this percentage. Um, how many people in this space that we're simulating were actually infected? And then it'll um, update those public variables that we declared up here to reflect those numbers. Uh, and it'll also debug and, and tell you that in the console. So that was the first script. Um, that one basically just calculates the number of infected in the game space. Um, so, okay, great. Now we have a people spawner script, which basically takes um, the percent that were infected. Okay, so next up we have the people spawner script. It's a pretty simple template, um, which essentially takes the data that was just rolled from the calculate infected script and attempts to instantiate um, NPCs or players based on that information. So we'll see here, we have a couple basic variables. Um, we have the position of things we're going to spawn, the game object. So you, if you have a, um, <clears throat> a prefab um, for NPCs, you can basically plug it in here uh, and it will spawn them for you. Uh, and then it talks to the calculate infected script, of course, um, to get the total infected and the total healthy. Um, so the, on start, it just grabs those numbers from, that, from the um, previous script. And then it calls a method um, to instantiate the infected or healthy people. Um, based on what it rolls. And it has some basic um, clone creation here um, just for your convenience. Um, but overall, it's a pretty simple script um, just meant to make your life a little easier. So next up, we have the breaking social distance script. Uh, it is also relatively simple, but this is basically what it attempts to do is tries to track what is the um, risk of infection for the player over time and what happens once um, they break social distancing. Like, how does that impact the player risk of infection? So we'll see here that this stores the player risk, which is essentially the percentage risk of infection for the player over um, at any given time. And you'll see that it talks to the calculate infected script. Um, it has a couple other data types here. Um, the the most important one here is just the transmission risk, which it which it grabs, uh, and whether or not the NPC that that the player bumps them to bumps them to is wearing a mask. That's a pretty vital one. So we'll see here on start, um, we set the transmission risk. So if the NPCs in your game are wearing masks, we have a transmission risk of 2%. Otherwise, the transmission risk is 5. And this could be dynamic. So if, if the NPC um, that it, the person bumps into, you have a mix of people wearing masks and not wearing masks. Um, that's up to you. And then we see here on collision enter, so you'll create some kind of collider bubble around the player um, that could be that will should represent around six feet. Um, and we'll see that um, you can just increase transmission, you can increase the risk of transmission based on what it was set up above. Um, I included another method here, which is simply to calculate the distance. So if you're not gonna use the collision event, you can also just calculate the distance between the person and the player or the NPC and the player to see if it's less than six units. 
Um, you can tinker with this based on how much six feet would be in your game, um, but we have a default value of six here. Uh, and then it just calls this increase risk function, which increases the player risk, which is a, um, a public variable. All right, and finally we have the timer script. So we know that a player's risk of infection increases whenever they break social distancing, but we also know that a person's risk of infection increases over time when they're in an enclosed space with people who are infected. So this script attempts to simulate that. So for us, we use a game time of 90 seconds, but it's open to you um, based on what you're simulating to change this. Um, so you could change this to um, like 30, um, 30 seconds if you have a really short game, um, or much longer if you have like a, um, if you're simulating a very long experience. Um, we also see here that the script calls the number of infected from the other script, the calculated infected script, um, which is important for calculating risk over time as well. Here we have an array of doubles. These are risk vectors. So you'll see at the, at the front, they're larger and they slowly diminish over time. Um, what this attempts to do is say, okay, we know whenever you walk into a space, um, at first your risk will be very high. So if there is a, um, COVID that's present in that space, uh, that's floating around in the air, you will catch it then, um, and then there's diminishing returns on that infection risk over time. These risk vectors were calculated by our epidemiologist, epidemiologist expert, um, and it'll make a little more sense how we use that below. So at the beginning, we invoke uh, repeating every 10 seconds this function, which is increased risk with time, uh, and we'll see that we update the player risk, which is stored in the other script, break social distance, um, based on the index of the risk factor, so are we on the first one, the second one, and so on, um, which increases every uh, invoke, right? Um, and then we multiply that times how many infected people are in the space, and then we multiply that times um, the infection or the transmission risk, which is dictated by mask usage, and so on. So we see that every 10 seconds in our game, you could change this, of course, um, it'll increase the um, risk of infection according to these risk vectors that we have calculated. All right, and that is um, the last script that we had to go through. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us about how to use this, um, this package. But essentially, you can import this, these files as a package into your Unity game um, and start using them right away. Thanks for listening.